Welcome back. We are here on eToro and this is going to be my daily uh, technical market analysis for Thursday, January 28, 2021. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us over at Patreon where you can get access to this full video. Also our signal service and also our online trades and courses. So we'll start by looking at the uh, foreign exchange market, cryptocurrency market, and then the commodities and precious metals market. So we'll start by looking at the uh, US dollar. And as you can see, we have rallied quite significantly today. We actually pierced the down 50 moving average here. And this had major implications for indices, um, stocks, and um, commodities as a whole. And of course, foreign exchange, as we will see in a moment. Most of our exchange, uh, the currency pairs that we'll look at were hit significantly um, by this rally in the US dollar index. We were up roughly half a percent. We are we pulled back a little bit and now we're trading just underneath the 50 moving average. And that is, well, an encouraging sign because we have actually done this several times before. We have tried to rally above the 50 moving average, pierce the 50 moving average, but every single time we have broken down. So at this point, Technical indicators are looking very bullish for the um, US dollar index. So we may see something similar to this. This may not be the end of this rally, especially if the uh, 20 exponential um, pierces the or, or crosses uh, the 50 moving average, and then we'll most likely see something similar to this. Then uh, the 20 exponential and the 50 will no longer become resistant. They will become support and will basically bounce off of those moving averages. But we're not there yet. First of all, we have to have a full uh, candlestick above the 50 moving average in order to come to the conclusion whether or not we are going to trend um, further towards the 200 moving average. At the moment, we're still underneath the 50 and the 50 is still acting as resistant. But this was a major move for the US dollar index and it had major implications for the entire market. So let's look at the Great British Pound, Great British Pound and the US dollar. So as you can see, we fell quite significantly, but technically we're just at the same place. We rallied to these very highs yesterday and we also started by rallying earlier in the session and then broke down. We went all the way down to 1365 and still we're trading above the 20 exponential. We have not tested it, we have not broken uh, underneath it or anything. So we may have probably one or two more trading days where we um, where we depreciate, head towards the 20 exponential, uh, probably pierce the 20 exponential and head towards the 50. But I don't think that we're going to see a major move very similar to this. So. That is not why what I am expecting for this currency pair. 20, 20 exponential is still a major support, and the 50 is even, even bigger support in this market. Technical analysis are terribly flat at this point. They're looking like they're turning around, but they are actually flat at this point. So um, pullback towards the 20, that is a possible buying opportunity if this turns around and the target will be these previous highs or in the first run. So let's look at the US dollar yen. So as you can see, we have rallied significantly. This was one of those currency pairs that basically took off the day. We were up, I think, more than 1%, um, and we have not pulled back. So there's not a lot of pullback here. So this may go significantly higher. We have been in a downtrend for a very, very long time. And if we were to draw this downtrend here, it would look something similar to this. And we would have, sorry, something similar to this. So we have pierced the upper channel. We have broken through it. Uh, but we have done that several times in the past. So this is not something new. If we manage to get a, a clear candlestick above this channel tomorrow, uh, then that could mean that we'll head towards the 200 moving average. However, if we break below this channel, 
then that could open the door to these very lows again. So this is how this currency pair has been behaving for a very long time. So cross the channel or test the channel and then broken down all the way to the bottom, up again, and so on and so on and so on. So even in the lower parts, we have also pierced the channel significantly and then rallied. So we have to see. I would not be... Uh, I would actually want to see uh, round three or four uh, green candlesticks to the upside before I would come to the conclusion that we were even going to test the 200 moving average. If you consider this move here, then this is around three trading days where we basically rally above this channel and then break down. So at this point, just see what basically happens. If we have a um, a closing underneath this channel or underneath the 50 moving average, then there's a very high probability that we'll continue towards the downside. So if you look at technical indicators, they are all very bullish at this point. So it's going to be interesting what happens. If the US dollar starts to do depreciate, and then we could go significantly lower in this market. So let's look at the euro US dollar. So we have broken the 50 moving average and then we rallied again. At this point, it is not very clear where we're going. Um, I could make an estimate that we are going to test these previous highs over here. So that would mean that we'll go down to 11, uh, roughly, uh, roughly 12.00. That would be a very round number and would make quite a lot of sense that we went down there before we continue this rally. If this level breaks, these previous highs here, that could, could open the door to these lower levels here and also the 200 moving average. Technical indicators are looking very, very bearish at this point. So it is possible. For example, the MACD is underneath zero. So we're actually in, in, in uh, negative territory and that is very bearish for, for this um, currency pair. But it kind of depends on the US dollar index. If the US dollar starts depreciating again, then you will see this skyrocket to the highs. So this pullback here also is an indication that there are quite a lot of buyers that are trying to buy it at this level. We're still trading underneath the 50 moving average. So we'll see basically what happens here. So let's look at the Aussie dollar, US dollar. So as you can see, we have broken below the 20 exponential moving average and actually the channel that we were in, we have basically broken through that. So we were in this channel here. We have broken through that channel at this moment. We are actually trending lower towards the 50 moving average. Technical indicators are looking dreadful for this currency pair. So target at this moment are these previous highs. So we are not that far away from those previous highs, and the 50 moving average. I would guess that that when we get to the 50 moving average, there's going to be a lot of buyers in jumping in to buy this. It will also be very low in the RSI. This will most likely be overbought at that point. And uh, you will see in the stochastic and uh, the CCI, they will turn around before the MACD uh, when and there's an indication that we'll turn around. So my target at the moment is the 50 moving average. And uh, the take profit will be around these previous highs here of 0 0.78 or to 0 0.80. So in long run, it's 0 0.80. And in, short, in the medium short run, it'll be 0 0.78. So let's look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar. We can see that we have rallied quite significantly. And this is a currency pair that I think is very interesting to to uh, jump in. We haven't started uh, training this yet, but uh, this is one of those currency pairs I am thinking about basically entering for a short. So we rallied up towards the 50 moving average, and as you can see, it is acting as major resistant, and usually what that means is that we will basically roll over here. So there are a few things. If the US dollar, for example, starts depreciating, that will be very bearish for this currency pair. Furthermore, if if commodities, for example, like oil, start uh, start rallying tomorrow, that will also um, make the Canadian dollar um, stronger, and that will of course also 
put pressure on this currency pair to go lower. So look at for the US dollar index and also the value of, of oil. If oil goes up in value, then that will basically means that, um, um, that uh, demand for Canadian dollars will increase and that will also make it more, uh, more valuable and it will basically pressure this to lower levels. So, but it is holding very nicely. We have actually rallied above the 50 moving average in, in previous, um, for example, here in September, we were above the 50 moving average. Also here in October, in the mid and also in the end, basically the end of October, in the beginning of November, we were also above the 50 moving average. So if we start trending above the 50 moving average, then I'll stay away from this for, for some time. But if we get a very green, if we get a red candlestick here tomorrow and closing below the 50 moving average, then it's a trade that I will be considering to buy into. So let's look at oil. So let's look at the Bitcoin. So the cryptocurrency market has uh, fallen all the way down to, or Bitcoin has fallen all the way down to the 50 moving average. We have tested the 50 moving average, pulled a, 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 basically rallied from the 50 moving average again, but we're still down quite a bit today. Technical indicators for the uh, for Bitcoin are still very bearish. If the 50 breaks, then that will basically be a tidal wave all the way down towards uh, these previous lows here and the 200 moving average. So this is a market that went absolutely parabolical. If you look at the Fibonacci retracements for the cryptocurrency, uh, for Bitcoin, I should say, then we, you can see that in the daily chart, we haven't even reached the first Fibonacci retracement. That's how, um, how parabolical this, uh, this uh, cryptocurrency became. We rallied all the way from uh, where it was basically in August, where we were trading at 9,000, and in the basically end of um, of the year, we were trading at thirty two thousand. So, yes, it, a very ridiculous move of roughly the four hundred over four hundred percent in uh, in well, I could say nearly like four months. That is uh, not sustainable, and we can we can see that uh, pullback at this moment. So the first Fibonacci retracement is underneath the fifty moving average, so it's down at twenty seven. The second one is a 50 here, it's 22. And I would bet this is most likely where we are heading towards before we continue rallying. So we'll most likely head towards uh, 22,000 and then um, the pull back towards the 50 moving average or the 20 exponential and then maybe rally from there or just completely crash towards the 200 moving average. So the steam is mainly out of the cryptocurrency market it was a lot of hype like it also was uh, back in 2017 that got the, this cryptocurrency to this level i'm not saying that we're not going back to uh, 32000 i just i just don't see us seeing this type of move anytime soon that is probably not going to occur um for a very very long time if we go all the way back to 20, uh, 2017 we can see that sorry yes here so if we went all the way back to 2017, we can see that we went from roughly 628 here in, um, this was basically March in 2017, and all the way up to 20,000 in, that was roughly in November, no, this was here, it was December in 2017, before we basically broke down, rallied, and then completely collapsed towards the 200 moving average. This is starting to look very similar to this move. A very uh, aggressive run to the upside, a breakdown towards the 200 moving average, rally again towards 30, and then a completely breakdown towards, in this case, roughly 10,000. That's most likely where we're heading in the long run. So don't hate me for saying this, but 
I don't have much faith in cryptocurrency and so on. Um, but of course, it is possible that we will rally from here. That is possible. Um, we'll have to see. We have to break the 20 exponential. We have to start rallying up towards 40. And if that is the case, then yes, we could actually go higher. But momentum at the moment, if you look at these technical indicators, it is to the downside. It is definitely to the downside. So let's look at Ethereum. So Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin uh, recently. There are probably a few reasons for that, uh, but it has been outperforming Bitcoin. So we are still trending above the 20 exponential moving average, and we haven't broken down below it or tested the 50 moving average for a very, very long time. You have to go all the way back to in December um, to see us test the 50 moving average. So technical indicators for Ethereum are also looking very dire. So we are not overbought, but momentum for this cryptocurrency is still to the downside. So we will most likely, well, if, I won't say most likely, but if we break the 20 exponential, then we will most likely test the Fibonacci retracements for this cryptocurrency. So the first one is right here, roughly at 1000. The second one is here at 841. And the uh, 61.8 is at 689. So that will also coincide with a 200 moving average moving this way. And there will be a lot of support right in this area here. That's probably as far as it will, as it will go in basically in the long run. So that is if we break the 20 exponential. But at the moment, 20 exponential is major support. And you should expect this to either go sideways or rally further to the upside. So let's look at Litcoin. So Litcoin tumbled even further than, than Bitcoin today, uh, or has been falling even further than Bitcoin. Uh, we are actually trading underneath the 15 moving average. And that is a really, really worrying sign for this cryptocurrency. At this point, we are most likely going to test the Fibonacci retracements for this cryptocurrency. And as you can see, we have broken through the first one. We have broken through the 50 moving average. And this is the second major support area. And that is at $112. We tested it back here and then rallied. So it'll be interesting whether or not we run into this resist, uh, support area and rally up towards the 50. Technical indicators are looking dreadful. And if this breaks, that opens the door to the 61.8. And that is at 95. So we'll see. And if the 90, uh, if this level breaks, then we're heading all the way to the 200 moving average down here at 73. So not looking very good for these cryptocurrencies. Um, they went parabolical. And usually what basically happens is that you will have just as big of a parabolical move to the downside after a move like this. So let's look at uh, NEO. Something wrong with this. Yes, so NEO also felt significantly today and this is starting to look like it's going to test at least this level here. Uh, at the twenty dollars, and then towards the two hundred moving no twenty, sorry, fifty moving average at nineteen dollars. We can also look at the Fibonacci retracement for this cryptocurrency, and as we can see, we will most likely have found major support here at the sixty one point eight. That is just above the fifty moving average. So this area here should be a major support for this cryptocurrency, but still it has to show. Um, a sign of a turnaround before going higher. If these two um, support areas break, we'll have the 200 moving average down here at 16, and then 200 moving average breaks, we'll go all the way to 100% uh, here at 14. So looking quite dire for the cryptocurrency market, but that is how this market basically behaves. You can see that this move here was also fairly parabolic a move and we broke all the way down to the 200 moving average. This was a fairly parabolic move, and it would be strange if we fell all the way down to the 200 moving average and then rallied from there. So it is not uncommon for these cryptocurrencies to go 
very parabolic and then break down completely and so on. And that's basically a, a way to basically make money. So let's look at the commodities and precious metal market. We'll start by looking at oil. So oil has been basically all over the place. So there are many things that play into this, uh, mainly the US dollar index. Uh, US dollar starts uh, appreciating that is very bad for oil and it will tend to fall. If we basically fell and we pull back mainly to the, uh, to the fact that the US dollar started depreciating at the end of the session. If we look at the technical indicators, they are all looking very dire for, for oil, but the good thing here is that the 20 exponential is holding. So it is very reliable at the moment and uh, rally from here that opens the door to 55. But the break of the 20 exponential moving average opens the door to the 50 moving average at 38 at the 48 dollars. Uh, and that is probably as low as this it will go at this point. Even the so yes, we'll see. So let's look at natural gas. So natural gas has rallied the last three trading days. We're trading, uh, trending just above the 50 moving average. And this is just more of the same. We can just look all the way back here in November, broke down, rally, broke down, rally, and so on and so on. And it's just the same momentum and movement. Uh, 200 moving average is uh, looking like it's very, very supportive. So it will take um, a lot to get through that. But if the 200 moving average breaks, we'll head all the way down to two. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, if we rally from here, we'll probably go and test three. Uh, that is as far as this will go at this current day, uh, uh, current date of the year. So um, it is. It'll be interesting to see. But um, I am not looking at this as we're going to break out from and rally all the way to the to the upside. Uh, we have tried to rally above the fifty several times before and then broken down quite significantly. So we'll see what happens. Technical indicators are looking fairly uh, bullish at this point, and this is probably one of the few commodities, uh, commodities that um, have been rallying today. So let's look at copper. So as you can see, copper fell all the way down to the 50 moving average, and from here we'll most likely see a rally from copper. I'll be really surprised if copper broke down significantly. And if you look at the US dollar index, and then if that starts depreciating, that will be very, very bullish for copper. So keep that in mind. This is a very interesting market to look at. However, these technical indicators are looking dreadful. So we may see something similar to this before rallying. But you'll see in the one hour, two hour chart, in the one hour and the four hour chart whether or not when it's basically time to start buying into this because it, this is not a breakdown. For, we're not going to test the 200 moving average anytime soon. But this pullback is a buying opportunity. It's just the question is when to enter this market. So, Hope you find this helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by hitting the subscribe button down in the corner. Hit the like button and the bell button to see our newest videos. And you're welcome to join us on our Patreon where you can get access to this full video. Good luck and thank you very much.